this simple idea, offering opportunity and prosperity to as many people as possible, arguably proved to be our parents and grandparents' most sustained and effective way of protecting and serving their state and nation. So, how do we best emulate those who came before us? On this day, can we identify the key to fulfilling this mission you've laid out for yourselves? Today, can we isolate the thread that assures your desires, hope, and work for prosperity, safety, and lives protected from destruction seamlessly connect and continue the legacy of prior generations. I believe in my bones that the answer, the most powerful vehicle that the greatest generation had and that this aspiring generation has is a good education. But I fear the educational fabric of our state has become worn. I fear we are not living up to what has been passed down to us. And failure in this regard will cause us to fail in the mission we all share. Of course, the first example that comes to mind, and rightfully so, um, rightfully so as an example of how powerful the force of education can be, is the GI Bill. Our, those that came before us saw that the GI Bill could mean the world to folks like, uh, just to use an example, someone who got out of the service, went to work as an electrical technician because that's what they had learned in the service, but then decided they wanted more. And so they went back to school. They would go to college, working hard all day and going to school at night to take that electrical technician practice and become an electrical engineer. I can't imagine how hard they must have worked in those years. But I also can't imagine how different their lives and our lives would have been without those college diplomas. For our nation and state, the GI Bill was very forceful. It elevated countless Americans into the middle class, and universities in Texas and across the country scrambled to keep up with the demand. Our state responded by bulking up its two public flagship universities, the University of Texas at Austin and Texas A&M, which now educate nearly 100,000 students. Even years later, building on uh, this nation and the, this idea that education is the key to prosperity, between 1969 and 1973, in that period alone, the University of Texas system founded institutions in Brownsville, Dallas, San Antonio, Tyler, and Odessa. Of course, Texas's commitment to education reaches all the way back to its creation. In their Declaration of Independence, our founders listed this outrage against the government. Quote, it has failed to establish any public system of education, although possessed of almost boundless resources. Through statehood, civil war, and reconstruction, our founders maintained their commitment to education. In 1876, they wrote into the state constitution, calling on future generations to support and maintain an efficient system of public free schools. However, despite all that history, the state didn't truly and comprehensively fund Texas schools until, wait for it, shortly after World War II. In 1949, the legislature passed the Gilmore-Aiken Law, creating the framework for our modern school finance system with a new commitment to support schools in a more equitable way. The bill enshrined a generation's pledge to make sure that more Texas children would know prosperity than the generation before. This, to me, was more than a law. It was a hard-fought act of sacrifice, heroism, generosity, pride, strength, and unity. All of those values we honor, especially on this day. And today, September 11th, as we consider where we've come over the past eight years, 
where we want to go and the example our parents and grandparents have left us, it's appropriate to ask why these values now seem so rare, particularly with regard to how we teach our children. Since 1989, over 20 years now, Texas has been sued over and over again because our public schools don't meet the most basic measures of adequacy and fairness. And despite several attempts, the state still hadn't found a long-term solution to fund our schools and remove the burden from property taxpayers. Meanwhile, the percentage of state funding going to schools dropped from 47% the year before September 11th to less than 34% in 2006. That state share was restored to just less than half, but only after yet another court ruling mandated that a new school finance system be put into place. And folks, even that band-aid has started to fall off. On top of that, between 1998 and 2006, state spending on colleges and universities dropped nearly 12%, while tuition and fees jumped nearly 70%. The consequences of these truths are evident in Texas, and they're evident in Texas's stubbornly dismal education statistics. We're right near the bottom. We're right near the bottom in the country in SAT scores. We're among the bottom 10 states in first student spending, and most tragically, Perhaps most troublingly, we have the smallest percentage of people over 25 years old with a high school diploma. That last figure doesn't merely break with the legacy of our parents and grandparents. It directly affects the mission of the Crime Commission. According to a study by the Bush School of Government and Public Service of Texas a &M, at least 40,000 and perhaps up to 70,000 students in the class of 2012 will drop out before they reach graduation. Those personal tragedies playing out tens of thousands of times in homes across Texas will suck $5 billion to $10 billion out of the state's economy. That total includes $600 million up to a, a billion from 600 million to a billion lost to crime and incarceration. By increasing the graduation rate just 10 percentage points, according to researchers, we would see at least 7% fewer crimes, 8% fewer violent crimes, 20% fewer murders and assaults, and 13% fewer motor vehicle crimes. All told, if we graduated every kid in the class of 2012, there would be at least 19,000 fewer and potentially 33,000 fewer crimes in the state of Texas. Now, such a goal, the, the perfection of 100% graduation rate isn't necessarily realistic, and I know that. But it's a goal, a target to shoot for and work toward in the midst of an undeniably serious challenge. Unfortunately, in my view, the state is moving in the other direction. I've already mentioned where we stand on high school graduation rates. And Texas, the Texas graduation rate likely dropped again this year. And if the state budget that took effect last week hits its mark, in other words, if it works, if it meets its goals, the graduation rate will drop again in 2010 and 2011. The statistics reveal what we can expect a 16% dropout rate each year of this biennium. That's more than 45,000 kids per year. That means that if the state does everything it hopes to accomplish in this budget, well over 90,000 kids, nearly the combined student population of UT and A&M, will try to make it in this world without a high school diploma. Virtually all of them. I think it's fair to say, won't have any chance whatsoever to know the prosperity we've known in this room. Most will struggle to find work. They'll struggle to find work that promises them real security for themselves and their family, let alone contributes to the Texas economy in any meaningful way. And far too many of them will avoid
evaluate the one equal opportunity, eternally available option that we don't even want them to consider. But this is about more than crime. This is a crisis, a clear, immediate threat to our way of life, our prosperity, and our basic safety and security. We have to do something about it.